And this is the AutoBox B5 Pro mirror dash cam. And what makes this dash cam special is that it is a direct mount dash cam straight from the factory. There is no need to convert this dash cam. It has been specifically designed to appear on, to appear original. And notice some of the key features. For example, we only have a single cable that is hitting coming out from the back versus having several cables out from the top that may look unsightly. You'll also notice that there are no buttons or visible openings that means that the memory card is completely hidden on this dash cam, which is great because not only does it help to make the dash cam look original, it can prevent somebody from taking your memory card and your video evidence. Now, I have previously converted other mirror dash cams to a direct mount style, but you can see right here how different that looks versus one that was designed to be direct fit from the start. You can also see on this dash cam where several cables will come out, where on the B5 Pro, we have a complete finished appearance. Now, if you do wanna see the full review for the AutoBox B5 Pro. I have already made that. I'll put a link to that in the description down below. And I have also put a link in the description to this dash cam in the description in case you want to get one. On this video, I'm going to give you a complete tour of the menu and my personally recommended settings for this dash cam. And to access the settings menu, I'm going to tap on the screen once, and then I'm going to stop the recording by pressing on the little red button. Now I can access the settings by pressing the gear icon. And as you can see, the settings have been divided into two menus, movie mode and general settings. We'll begin with the movie mode tab. The first setting is resolution, where we get two choices to run both the front and the rear camera in full high definition, which is 1080p, or in standard high definition, which is 720p. You can potentially fit more on your memory card by running this at 720, but I prefer run this at the maximum resolution, which is 1080p. Next up, we have movie clip time. Dashcams record video continuously, but they segment that video into smaller manageable chunks of video. And here we can select how how long we want those chunks of video to be, one minute, three minutes, or five minutes. There is no incorrect number on here, just a matter of preference. I like three minutes, I think that's a nice in between. Next up, we have sound record. We can choose to only record video, or we can choose to have this dash cam record both the video and the sound. Next, we have reverse line switch. And what this function does, it enables the parking assist function of the dash cam. And that is enabled when connecting this wire to the reversing tail lights of the vehicle. Every time I put the car on reverse, there will be reversing guidelines that appear. However, this function also turns on a very neat feature of this dash cam, which I have not found in any, in any other dash cam. And that is the ability to bring up those parking assist lines manually Manually without having to connect this red wire. As you can see, I brought him up by just sliding on the screen, and if I, when I'm done backing up, I can make him go away by swiping one more time on the screen. But also notice that the guidelines are adjustable. I can drag on the screen and I can make those guidelines either go up, down, side to side, and that should be helpful so I can make these guidelines reflect the exact size of my car and how close I want to be to the curb. But if I don't want to use the parking assist function, either with the red wire or manual, Manually, I can turn that function off and if I swipe on the screen you can see that those lines do not appear anymore. I really like having that parking assist feature so I'm going to leave this function on. Next up we have driving mode and if I turn this function on there is going to be a special screensaver that is going to come on after a certain period of time. This is going to turn off and show only essential information. Let me show you what that looks like. And here's what the driving mode look like and it takes about 30 seconds for the mirror to change into this driving mode where we have a compass and we have our miles per hour. Now, right now, since the dash cam is not installed on a vehicle, the GPS is having trouble locating itself and there is no speed because we are not moving. And if I ever wanted to bring up the regular rear view, I can just tap on the screen and the regular rear view returns. Now, because I like to use my mirror as a full-time mirror, I'm going to turn this function off. However, you can turn that on if you like to have that minimized view. Next up, we have parking monitoring. And parking monitoring allows this dash cam to record if there were to be an impact that happened when the car was parked and you were away from it. We have a choice of having that function off or we have a choice of setting this on low, middle or high. And this is the sensitivity to the dash cam detecting an impact. If I set this too high, I may potentially record a lot of false alerts. If I set this too low, I may not record or capture an impact that was slightly soft. I personally leave the parking monitoring setting on high because I rather end up with a lot of false alerts, but this is going to give me the best possible possible chance at capturing if somebody impacted my vehicle when I was away from it. But now let's move over to the general settings tab. The first option is going to be beeping sound. If I turn this beep every time I touch the screen, 
we get this beep sound. Now, I don't really enjoy that beep sound, so I like to turn this beep off. Then we have volume. Now, the volume right here controls not only the volume of that beep, but also the volume of videos that we are playing back on this dash cam. So I leave that on high so I can play back the videos and be able to listen to the audio. Next up is languages, and we get a couple choices to select from. I'm gonna leave mine in English. Moving on to LCD power save, if we want the screen to turn off, but continue recording, here we can turn that function on. And we got a choice to say, turn the screen off after one minute, but continue recording, or turn off the screen after three minutes and continue recording. I like to have my screen on all the time, so I'm gonna turn this function off. Next up is the protect level, and this is very similar to the impact sensor for parking, except that this sensor is from when we're driving. And once the dash cam senses that we crashed, the video is going to get flagged so we can find it a lot easier on the future. And here we have the option to have that sensor completely off, or we can tell it to have it in low, middle, or high. Now, if I set this sensor to high sensitivity, it is possible that I may end up with a lot of false alerts where the dash cam thinks I crash and now it's going to flag a video. Perhaps if I go over a speed bump or over a pothole, I may potentially end up with a false crash. So I personally run mine on low, but I do recommend experimenting with your vehicle because this is going to vary from car to car. But now let's move over to the second part of the menu and we have the speed unit. The speed unit can be set between kilometers per hour or miles per hour. Next we have GPS time sync. This dash cam is automatically going to pull the GPS and date if we turn this function off. If we manually want to enter that information, we would want to turn this function off. I like to have my GPS set the date and time, so I'm going to turn that function on. However, it is important to tell this dash cam where I'm located with the time zone feature. And in the time zone feature, I get to tell the dash cam where I am, and that's how it knows how to set the correct date and time. If I put the incorrect time zone in here, the dash cam is potentially going to set the incorrect date and time. Moving over to clock settings, here's where we can manually adjust the clock if we decide not to use the GPS time sync. And we can also change the day format to have the year, the month, and the day, the month, the day, and the year, or the date and the month and the year. I like month, day, and year. Moving over to the last section of the settings menu, we have time format. And here we can select between military time, which is 24 hours, or 12 hour format, which is AM, PM. Next up, we have the automatic rear view. We know we can see the front camera or the rear camera on this dash cam. However, if I want this dash cam to always return to the rear view, I'm gonna leave this function on. If I want to, for some reason, drive with this camera showing me the front of the car, I'm going to turn this function off. I like to have my mirror return to the rear view, so I'm going to turn this function on. Then we have reset setup. If for some reason we change something on this dash cam and we don't know how to return it back to normal, we can reset all the settings and this mirror is going to return to how we originally got it when we first bought it. Next up is the format SD card option that allows us to erase all the videos in the memory card by hitting yes. It is also recommended to use the format option every time a brand new memory card has been installed on the dash cam. And finally, we have the firmware version. There is nothing to change on here. This just shows us the current software that this dash cam is running. And now that you know how to use the B5 Pro mirror dash cam to its full potential, make sure you hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. And if you have any other questions regarding this dash cam, please put that in the comments down below. And remember, I also put a link in the description in case you want to get this dash cam. And stay tuned as I have a lot more mirror dash cam reviews coming up. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.